So there's been a lot of interest on YouTube lately about the cost of living in Puerto Rico, so I thought I'd do a little video on that. Housing in Puerto Rico is generally quite a bit cheaper than what you're used to in the United States. I live in Dorado. You can rent a room there for a few hundred dollars or you can rent a rock star mansion for more than 10,000 a month. We live in a four bedroom, four and a half bath, 2,500 square foot townhome overlooking an abandoned golf course. We can rent it for about 2,500 a month and it's probably worth maybe 350,000. Our HOA dues are 300 a month, which isn't too bad. If you live in a more expensive community like Dorado Beach East, they're going to be well north of 700. And if you live in one of those beachfront two to three million dollar villas that rent for 2,000 a night or whatever, I've heard the HOAs on those things are 7,000 a month. Our property tax is about 1.2% of our purchase price. Maintenance is something to consider here if you own a property because the tropics are, it's a really tough environment here. Things decay so much more quickly. So you'll spend a lot on painting because you know you just have to paint every few years because it starts to peel off. Labor is cheaper here, which is helpful. It's just way more flaky. I mean, you think contractors are flaky where you live, you don't know flaky. They say they're gonna show up, they don't show up, they don't show up for days, they don't call back, they don't message, they just show up unannounced. The other thing to think about is your air conditioning units. You will live on air conditioning, so you have to maintain them every six months or so. Um, drains have to be emptied all the time because little bits are always accumulating in them and mold is a constant thing. Like if you leave something alone for a week, it's gonna be covered with mold. Insurance. We pay $1,200 a year for an extremely robust policy. Utilities. So electricity in Puerto Rico is really expensive. For example, here we're, right now we're paying about 20 cents a kilowatt hour. In Nevada they're paying, where I'm from in Reno, they're paying something like 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So it is double the cost here. We're always running at least one air conditioning constantly. So our minimum bill per month is $250. If we run a second AC unit continuously, 400 a month, if we're running it more, it might be 450. If we have guests in the house, we've had the bill all the way up to over 600, almost 700 a month. When we first moved here, we just ran everything willy nilly. We had no idea. We got our first bill and it was like, oh my God, we need to come back. You will need a generator in Puerto Rico because the power grid since the hurricane is still unstable. I mean, it's getting better, but it's still unstable. So if you live in a condominium, make sure that they have a generator and that it covers more than just the common areas. Make sure that it covers your unit. If you own your own place, you're going to need to get a generator. You know, you can get a basic generator that's pretty good for 700 or you can go up to 4000 or more. And it's going to be about $20 a day for gas for eight hours. That's just eight hours. And you can't run them all the time. They're not designed, maybe the big ones are, but they're really not designed to be run constantly. Water here is really cheap. It's for, we pay like 23 bucks a month. We're not watering a lawn or a garden or anything like that. We're just two people in a house taking showers, doing dishes, washing clothes, that sort of thing. We have internet through Liberty and it's $80 a month for 25 megabits um, of service. No cable TV. Liberty is 98% reliable, but sometimes it goes down and it's down for a while. And if you live in Condado or San Juan proper, that's where the best, fastest internet is. So that's another consideration. Out in Dorado, it's maybe not as robust as in the city center. Okay, groceries. Organic is way more expensive and difficult to find here on the island. So if you're a vegan, you're going to have some real challenges. You know, you'll find local roots and some fruits, but if you need regular vegetables that you're used to in the mainland, you're going to have a hard time. I would say packaged goods like, you know, canned foods, crackers, cereal, you know, that kind of stuff. It seems to be comparable to prices that I was used to in Northern Nevada, Northern California. Produce. Like I said, native stuff is cheap, roots and fruit, um, but imported, which is everything else, is I would say 50% more expensive. It's just, I mean, when we were couch surfing, avoiding Hurricane Maria, we would go into the grocery store and we'd be like, oh my God, this is also cheap, cheap. And we were usually in the uh, produce section when we were saying that. 
Meat seems slightly more expensive here and the cuts are not as um, high quality, uh, especially beef. It's hard to find a good filet. I think chicken here is pretty comfortably priced because they grow chickens on the island and like, pork is, we don't eat a lot of pork. I don't think it's a lot more expensive. Dairy seems a bit more expensive too. Um, milk is a little bit more. I know on the island here it's harder for the cows to produce because it's so hot. They produce half as much, they produce like 17 gallons a day of milk here, one cow, versus, you know, 33 gallons a day on, you know, a cow up north because of the weather. And in the summer, when it gets too hot, they can't even produce at all. So um, they have to import the milk in the summer. But the good thing about the milk here, locally produced milk, it's all organic. They can't advertise that because in the summer, they do have to import milk, and they don't know exactly whether or not that milk is organic or not. So they can't say it's organic. So just a pro tip for you there. Imported foods are more expensive. So fancy cheeses, you know, nice wines, wine in general, prosciutto, all those little imported things, definitely more expensive. Like for example, haagen -Dazs. We love coffee haagen -Dazs. A quarter of that um, on the mainland I think is around eight bucks and here it's 12. So we had to cut back on the haagen -Dazs habit. Okay, car. If you live outside of San Juan, you really do need a car to get around. So they are generally 15% more than what you're used to on the mainland due to shipping and import taxes and who knows what else. So when you're looking at Kelly Blue Book values for used cars, even if you put in this zip code, you're not necessarily going to be seeing prices that account for that difference. Car insurance seemed cheaper when we got here. We're paying $625 and annually for a 2012 Acura. Seems like we were paying more on the mainland. Gas here right now is 85 cents per liter. It was like, I think it was 65 cents a liter before the hurricane, but now it's 85 cents a liter. And, and that's 322 a gallon. So actually that's really not bad, I guess, compared to the rest of the US. When you get your car service, there's a ton of little shops around here that'll do it. I don't know how good they are. We always, uh, we bought our car used from a dealer and we always went to the dealer for service. The labor rates were slightly cheaper. <laughs> the one thing that's like dirt cheap here that we can still hardly believe is to get a tire fixed is like six bucks, maybe eight. I mean, there's these places all over the island called Gomeras, and I think it's because they're like a tire store and the roads are so horrible here. I guess that's why they're everywhere. And yeah, six dollars, they'll just, if you have a flat, they'll fix it. It's, it's pretty incredible. Tolls are another thing to think about when you're living on the island and driving around. They're on the freeway, there are toll booths every so often. And like for example, we live in Dorado to go to San Juan. I think we're paying $1.10 each way. For us to go to and from San Juan is gonna be, you know, 220 round trip, and that's not taking the express lane. During commute hours, they have an express lane available which has dynamic pricing, which is pretty cool. So if you're in Dorado and you see that the price is $4.25, take it because that means the traffic up ahead is horrible. If it's only a dollar twenty-five, then eh, you know, traffic ahead isn't so bad. Another pro tip. Restaurants, menu pricing here for sit-down restaurants is very similar to the mainland, but when you get the bill, you will be charged 11.5% sales tax, and if you put in a 15% tip, you're looking at almost 27% more than what it says on the menu that you're gonna pay. So it's expensive. It's expensive to eat out at sit down places here. McDonald's and fast food, which is everywhere, they seem kind of similarly priced. And you know, street food can be a pretty good deal. Um, but sit down restaurants definitely cost more. The movies here, we do have movies, which is fantastic. We love movies, but the theaters so, are so loud, we don't go to them anymore. But still, if you wanna go, uh, they cost about $12 for an adult here versus $8, which is what we were used to in Northern Nevada. Events, you know, there are a lot of events on the island and there's websites that tell you where they are and prtickets.com, you can buy tickets for pretty much anything. We don't go to very many because most of them seem kind of pricey for what they are. And then there's like the touristy adventure things like snorkeling or going on a cruise or running jet skis or, you know, segways. And they seem comparable to other resort places we've been. I mean, they're certainly comparable to other Caribbean island activities that we've encountered. Okay, so education. If you're coming here with kids, you either want to homeschool, and there are actually a lot of people on the island that do that, and there are Facebook groups and support groups for that, or you want to put your kids in private school. 
Private school is not cheap. So here in Dorado, we have Tassas, which is one of the top private schools on the island. Their annual fees are 10,000 to 13,000 a year, plus some additional fees. Four-year college, though, honestly, is dirt cheap. I don't know of anywhere in the world where it's cheaper unless it's in a socialist country where it's free. I mean, 2200 is the in-state tuition and 6200 is the out-of-state tuition. And this is for the public university, there's private universities as well. But, I mean, that's a really great deal. I would say that the cost of living here is definitely generally less and that's only because housing is so much cheaper and when you compare this to San Francisco you know the median there is like a million and the median here is like 100 150 I mean it's just so much less you know even Reno the median is probably 350 maybe it's approaching four so it's just so much less to live here in terms of housing but there are other little things add up to bring your costs up sales tax I mentioned that 11 and a half tax on the restaurants that's also you know whenever you go to the mall and buy something you're gonna be charged that 11 and a half percent tax if you're buying furniture 11 and a half percent little things add up to make it more expensive in some areas so it kind of depends on your lifestyle I think that's it if I left out something or if you have questions about living here about the cost of something let me know I don't have the answers to everything but I can maybe point you in the right direction this is our last day in Puerto Rico and tomorrow we fly out and we're gonna um, be picking up the car hopefully that arrived and we're gonna be driving across the country so hope you stick around and if there's something you want to see let me know There's a police boat out there. It's totally distracting. I, I, I think they were listening to me or something. I don't know. <laughs> Hope they don't think I'm a drug dealer.